everyone, it's Darby from RejoiceAndCreate.com. Thanks for stopping by today. Well, as we're progressing through Lent on our way to Easter, it's wonderful to have the little chicks and the eggs and the bunnies and flowers, everything that represents new life. But I wanted to make sure that I showcase the author of Eternal Life, and that would be our Lord and Savior. And what I did was created this really sweet clothespin cross clip. And uh, it's a cross put on a clothespin and then just decorated with whatever I had around that I thought was appropriate. Now the bag is very simple, it's quick to make and I'll show you how to do that. And then we'll focus on making the clothespin clip, which is very quick, you can assembly line it very easily. The bag itself is three and a half inches wide by one inch deep by four inches tall. And what I'm putting in it are these little Reese's, not little, but are the full size Reese's peanut butter eggs. But you can fit a lot of different things in there, even tea bags or coffee bags if you want to. Let me show you just a couple other samples. I have this one as well, and I love the, the drape. I'll make this one today. And here's the third sample. So you can see they're all decorated a little bit different, and I used what I had around. So we're going to make the bag. It's very, very quick and simple. And then we'll focus on the clip, and I'll tell you all the different supplies that I used for my different samples if you want them. or Simply just use what you have around. All right, so for the bag, pick a piece of pattern paper that you like. And this is five inches by nine and a half inches. And then go ahead and score it at three and a half inches, four and a half inches, eight inches, and nine inches. Turn it to the side. And if there's a pattern paper, put the uh, bottom of the pattern down, the top to the right, and score it at one inch. All right, so let's go ahead and fold and burnish our score lines. Okay, so that half an inch section is our glue tab and we don't need that bottom portion. So that little one inch by half an inch, go ahead and cut up that side of the score line and notch slightly. And I just notched slightly also on the top just to, in case I didn't line it up so that corner didn't stick out. Okay, so let's go ahead and free up our glue tabs, which are the one inch sections. Go ahead and cut very neatly just on the rectangular side of that score line and notch slightly into the square. Same with this other one. Okay, and this is what we have. So go ahead and put some strong adhesive on your glue tab, and we'll fold that over and close up our bag. Okay, this is the seam, so this is the back panel, and what we want to do is actually glue over the front panel last, so we'll put some glue on the inside of the front tab, put the sides in, put the back tab in, and then just put the front tab over. Okay, and go ahead and press those down, and we just have a very simple bag. Go ahead and just squeeze in the sides just to line up those two scored edges and close the top of the bag. That is all we need for the bag. Now for the topper on the bag, you can use quite a few different things. The simplest to use would be a rectangle that is just over three and a half inches wide, just a really a smidgen, not even a sixteenth of an inch, and two and a quarter inches um, wide. And what I did was scored it at one inch, so this side will go to the back and then I'll decorate this side. Now I'm not gonna spend time decorating it today, but you could use whatever you had around. And this one is actually a label that's just bigger than three and a half inches and I just folded it in half and folded it over. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on just to show you how to complete the bag and we'll get to the cross. So I put some adhesive on the back part of that and I lined the front part up side to side so I knew it was there and then I pushed down until the score line was right at the top of the bag and folded the glued part over. Okay, so that's what we have. Very simple bag. All right, so let's go ahead and get to the cross. All right, so what I used for the clothespin cross was the clothespin. And these are some of the natural ones I picked up at Walmart, and it was just a couple bucks for a lot of them, and I use them for a lot of different uh, craft projects. But you can find them at Dollar Tree or anywhere else. And although I did use, I did use them in their natural state on a few of these, I also used them stained. 
and I stained them in a few different ways. Now this one I actually stained using a RIT fabric dye and it was a RIT brown fabric dye that I just poured into a disposable cup and threw some of these uh, clothespins in and let it sit for, I don't know, four or five hours and then dried them off overnight. Uh, and that makes a really nice uh, stained clothespin. This one I actually used a, an alcohol marker with and I have the Stampin' Blends and I used the bronze one and I thought it was a really nice color. In fact, that's what I'm gonna decorate for the project today. On this one, I used a brown Sharpie marker just to color it all. And I, I didn't even open this one up as you can see. You could open them up and actually uh, do the wood separately and then put the metal piece back in. And on this one, I used um, a little bit of alcohol with uh, some of my alcohol inks I dripped in there. And I let that one sit in there for a few hours so it will stain. So you can stain them with whatever you have around, or you can just go ahead and use them natural. I think they look very pretty that way too. All right, so this one I'm going to use today. And what you'll need is just a 3 8 inch strip of cardstock. And I use cardstock because the sides of the cross will stick out from the clothespin, so I wanted to have a little bit stronger. Now on these, I used a textured embossing folder, and that's this wood grain one. And this is a Stampin' Up, Stampin Up one, because that's the one I have, but you can use whatever wood grain embossing folder you want. Or you could use a wood grain stamp or you don't even need a wood grain. You can just sponge the edges if you want to make it look old or just use it as it is if you want to make it look a little bit newer. So what I did was I cut a 3 8 inch strip and I cut it at least five inches long and I just lined them up in the embossing folder and ran it through because I found if I tried to cut the cardstock after I embossed it into the strips that the uh, texture prevented me from getting some good cuts. So I went ahead and I cut the strips first, then embossed them and then uh, glued them on my cross. All right, so for speed, and actually it worked pretty well, I'm going to use my Tomo Extreme. It's a really strong adhesive and it's just about as wide as the um, clothespin is, but you could also use some double-sided tape or some wet glue or even some um, hot glue if you want to. And I just went ahead and put a strip right up the clothespin and lined it up at the bottom, make sure my sides were lined up, and then just gently pressed it in all the way up. Now, some of the clothespins are longer than others. I have always had a little bit sticking up, so I just trimmed that right off at the top. For the next step, I actually used a dab of liquid glue. Again, you could use um, whatever else you wanted to. You could use a glue dot. I found it shifted on me. Um, you could use some hot glue, which would be good because that'd be really sturdy and stick fast. But I'm using liquid glue, which means I'm going to sit here and hold it for just a minute. And just put the cross beam of the cross right where you want it, where it looks good to you. Now, if I cut the this beam down a lot, I actually will trim that one a little bit too to keep it proportional. Okay, for today's project though, I'm gonna show you how I made this cross. And I used a product from Tailored Expressions, and this is called the Old Rugged Cross. It's TE517, and I really like this one, and it is still available, because it has three different sizes of crosses, and it has the draped fabric, which I really liked, and that's what I used on this one. So I die cut it out of white, and then I used um, a sponge with some darker brown to just do the edges to make it look like it was worn a bit. I went ahead and used some glue dots just right on the tops so I could hang it on the cross. And then to represent my crown of thorns, I just took some jute and I just wrapped it around my finger a couple times, pulled it off, and then I just wound the free end in around a few times. And then when I got to the two ends were together, I just tied a knot. All 
Okay, I cut that really close. And then I kind of tugged at the uh, jute a little bit to make it look like it had the thorns coming off of it because I wanted to make it look a bit more realistic. So put a glue dot right where that knot is. And then I put that with a glue dot facing forward over the back of the cross and I stuck that right to the back of the cross. And if you close it like this a few times, it can actually help you seal that down. So that was my cross. And then I just filled my bag with whatever you wanted and I closed it over. Of course, I didn't decorate my topper, but you might want to do that one before. Or if you're just gluing something on, you could do this first and then decorate the topper. But let me show you what I used on my other ones. For this one, I had a frond die, and I can't remember. This was a gift from somebody, so I don't know where they got it from. But um, I used this one to create the frond on the cross. And for the sentiment, I used a stamp set from Stampin' Up! This called Easter Message. And it says, he is not here, he is risen, with a verse, um, Matthew 28, 6. And um, I cut it apart. I put the he is not here down here, and he is risen on the cross. I'm not sure this one is still available, but this is one of those that I will hang on to because it has a message that I love. And then for the topper, you can use whatever topper you have that's about three and a half inches long or a little bit longer. For these, I used the um, stitched rectangles and I happen to have the ones from Stampin' Up! But you can use whatever you have that fits. Or you could use um, a label uh, die as well. Uh, this happened to be in my collection and what I did is I just folded it in half and glued the back of it again to the back of my bag. And for this one, I used the triple leaf punch and I used just one of the leaves cut off the triple leaf punch for that one. And I used a little flower punch that I had and I believe this one is retired, but you can use whatever you have. There's quite a few available. The Easter blessing stamp came from the Itty Bitty Greetings, but if you still have teeny tiny wishes, there's a happy Easter. And then I just put some washi tape that I had in my collection just to give it a little bit of decoration. If I did this one again, I would think I would move my Easter blessings up to the right a little bit so I could pull my clip down a bit more. And I tried to echo the decoration on my label with the decoration that was on the cross. So this is a very heartfelt project that goes very quickly actually. You can make a lot of them assembly style. You can clip them to whatever you want, but this bag is very simple and it goes fast. And it would make a really nice gift for, say, a nursing home or perhaps the ladies and gentlemen that work at the church just to let them know they're appreciated. Or even for um, favors at an Easter dinner. If you like the video, please subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to be notified of new videos as I upload them. For more information, please visit rejoiceandcreate.com. And as always, until we meet again, I hope all your days are blessed. Bye!